What's up, everybody? Welcome into the Bulls Report. My name is Patrick Seatman. Coming up on today's show, I want to have a little fun trade idea for the weekend where we are going to be sending Alex Caruso to the Houston Rockets for the third overall pick. And we're talking about some draft prospects that the Bulls could take if they could somehow land that number three pick in this year's upcoming draft. But this is a trade idea I cooked up as it's a simple one. It is the Bulls sending um, Alex Caruso and pick 11 to the Houston Rockets, and then the Bulls are receiving Jeff Green and the number three overall pick. So this is a trade I cooked up, but, you know, I think the Rockets are a team that is definitely going to be aggressive this offseason. You know, I think they've been kind of floating in this purgatory zone for the last couple of seasons, and they got a bunch of young players who are, you know, about to take, excuse me, that next step in the NBA. Well, what's a great way to help those guys out? Is you add a guy like Caruso, who is one at the highest level in the NBA, and he is just the definition of, of a winning basketball player and also this the western conference in the nba i think this is honestly getting not talked about enough amongst you know media members across the nba and youtubers is the west is going to be a wagon next season like i could just take two teams for example the memphis grizzlies and the san antonio spurs they are going to be a whole lot better next season then you already still have teams like the thunder the mavs you know the Suns are still ta stacked, the Timberwolves, like the Clippers, the uh, Lakers, like the Warriors, like all these teams, like the West is going to be incredibly deep. And honestly, I think it's not getting talked about enough is that I could see a lot of these teams in the Western Conference being like, hey, we need to kind of move ahead our championship window and go all in on this year because you got that guy in San Antonio, Victor Wembanyama coming. So I think the West and I think those teams like the Houston Rockets, you know, could be incredibly, incredibly aggressive. But who would they be aggressive for? Well, Alex Caruso, because this guy is just, you know, absolutely fantastic, man. And, uh, you know, I, I think Caruso and, you know, listen, this would pain me to see him leave the Bulls as he is, you know, one of my favorite players in the league. I just love the heart. I love the hustle. I love the grind he plays with. And, you know, this past season, winning the All-NBA Hustle Award, averaging 10 points, shooting it very, very well from downtown, and in my opinion, being a top five defender in the entire world. But it is time. Like, it is time to trade Alex Caruso. And, you know, he's got one year left on his deal. Like, might as well get something for him now in comparison to letting him walk, and he's going to go get the bag somewhere else. Like, he'll sign a deal similar to what Bruce, uh, Bruce Brown did, you know, last offseason, like a two for 60. Like, teams view guys like Caruso – is incredibly valuable. And, you know, I got laughed at when I made a video last season saying I think Caruso has more trade value than a guy like Zach Levine. I promise you if you offered that deal to the Houston Rockets and you just put Zach Levine instead of, in there instead of Alex Caruso with his, you know, contract on top of that, like, they would absolutely laugh in your face and they would shut that door very, very quickly. And, listen, he deserves to play for a contender. Like, I'm sick of seeing Caruso, you know, bust his ass, you know, during these, you know, January, February games. And, you know, he deserves to be playing right now. He deserves to be playing in June. He deserves to be playing in May in these high intense playoff basketball games because that's when you see guys like Caruso play their best basketball. And also in this trade for the Bulls, you're getting a guy like Jeff Green who, you know, is he the same player that he once was? Hell no. And let me actually look up how old Jeff Green is right now because he's got to be pushing at least 40. Yeah, he's 37 years old, but you know, just his experience in the NBA, I love a lot. And, you know, he's still effective uh, this past season. You know, he can come in, play 16 at night, you know, shoot the ball pretty well from downtown, just be that connector on offense. And he's still a very smart defender, even though, you know, he has definitely lost a step. And listen, if the Bulls end up losing DeMar DeRozan in free agency, and let's just say they try to move off him, like, Green would be a great, great veteran presence to add. And, you know, I think if you look at the Bulls' development over guys like Kobe White and Aldo Sumo, I would chalk most of that up, you know, to a guy like DeMar DeRozan instead of, you know, the scouting department or the player development um, department with the Bulls. And, you know, I think Jeff Green could look at a guy like Patrick Williams and be like, that's a young version of myself. I'm going to take him under my wing, and I'm going to be a big reason why he is going to make, take the next step. So I absolutely love this trade for the Bulls, and we'll talk about more draft prospects at uh, pick three here in a second. But, you know, if this is a deal that goes down, I'll tell you what, I would be absolutely thrilled uh, to see this trade, you know, get uh, done uh, this offseason. But, you know, it would obviously hurt to lose Caruso as well. But let me know, would you do this deal? Give me an A for accept or a D for decline down in the comments section. I'm going to be typing my A's down there, but you guys uh, let me know as well what you guys would do.
Coming up next year, I got some Bulls draft targets at pick three if they do can, uh, you know, somehow pull off this massive, massive blockbuster trade. But before we dive into that, got to tell you guys about today's presenting sponsor, Prize Picks, my favorite app I have on my phone and the number one daily fantasy sports app out there. And it is daily fantasy sports made easy. And how do you play? You pick uh, more than or less than on two to six player stat projections. And with the NBA Finals going on right now, a game going down this Sunday night, game two of the Celtics and Mavs. You guys should create a lineup for that because it just adds so much more extra juice to that viewing experience. And even when the NBA Finals do wrap up, women's basketball is taking over the nation right now. You guys can start creating lineups for players like Caitlin Clark or maybe maybe even Chicago Sky's very own Angel Reese. So if you guys want to get uh, hooked up on the fun, use promo code CLNS. We're going to match your first deposit into your account. First deposits only. Um, when you use promo code CLNS, we'll match it up to $100. So win big money today, withdraw your winnings at any time, and get hooked up with Price Fix because I uh, promise you guys, you guys will enjoy it. It is my favorite app. I have my phone. It just adds, you know, so much more um, juice to these uh, games this uh, this off season. But let's talk about Donovan Klingon here. So I want to say Donovan Klingon, like if the Bulls had the number one pick, this is the guy I'm taking, but I would still probably go Alex Sar, but... Man, the more I watch on Klingon, he just impresses me more and more every single time. And, you know, this past year at UConn, you know, winning another national championship in back-to-back seasons, like, he's great, man. And, you know, what I love about him the most is just, you know, his ability to defend the rim. I think he's got, you know, somewhat of a need for improvement in terms of his perimeter defense, but in terms of, like, his interior defense, I mean, that's his calling card. Like, that's what is, like, that is the reason why he's going to get drafted and. Listen, he's only 20 years old, seven foot two, 280 pounds, and my pro comp for him is Walker Kessler, who, you know, I bet you if you ask a lot of NBA GMs, like, who's, like, the best-kept secret in the NBA right now, I bet you a lot of them would say Kessler, but strengths, his interior defense, fantastic at guarding the rim, does a great job at staying vertical when guards are trying to get into his chest, but, you know, weakness I had, his versatility, I just don't really think he's, uh, you know, the most versatile basketball player out there, like, he does uh, a couple things very, very well. I just don't know if he's going to be like that, you know, all NBA type of player. But in terms of a great role player and a great five, you know, in the league, like Klingon is that. But what about his teammate? Let's talk about Stefan Castle here is, you know, maybe this would be a little zealous taking him in at taking him at pick three. But Kevin O'Connor uh, wrote up his big board for the ringer. And, you know, he had Stefan Castle as his number one rated draft prospect. And he was a former five star recruit, went to UConn, kind of swallowed his pride a little bit and just said, I'm going to play in the flow of the offense, and I'm going to have, or I'm going to try to win a national championship, and that's what he did, man, and, you know, he was very effective for the Huskies, you know, only in 27 minutes a game, averaged 11 points, 4.7 rebounds, almost three assists, field goal percentage was at 47.2, three-point percentage at 26.7, but, you know, some more on Castle, like, his pro comp for me, like, I see a lot of Lonzo Ball, and, you know, I think he's a better half court player than Lonzo and Lonzo was much better in transition but in terms of like that six foot six build you know a guy who can push the ball you know up the floor like he is that now some of uh, some of his weaknesses are shooting you know hence why I did shoot you know under 30 percent this past season um, at UConn but I still think he's gonna be able to develop that I think he's gonna turn himself into a really nice player here in the league but he's got good size still 19 years old and uh, you know Castle the more I look at these you know UConn players the more I lo- uh, like them. And I kind of make a comparison to this UConn team that won back-to-back natties. You know, I could compare them to a Villanova team, you know, with Dante DiVincenzo, with Jalen Brunson, with Josh Hart. Like, all those guys have ended up working out in the league. And you see it from even last year's team. Like, even Adama Sanogo for the Bulls, like, he had a couple good games when he uh, did get the rotational minutes. So, you know, I just like drafting, you know, winning players from Big East schools. It just seems like every single time, like, they're – like, they almost seem bust-proof because of, you know, the style of play they played at their respective, you know, universities. But you guys let me know. Pick a player for me. Give me an SC for Stefan Castle or give me a DC for Donovan Klingon in terms of who you would pick at uh, pick number three for the Chicago Bulls. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. As always, go Bulls.